In this video, I'm going to show you the best and correct exporting settings for you to have a high quality Instagram photo using Lightroom Classic 2024. Hello photographers, welcome back to my channel. For the ones who doesn't know me yet, my name is Silvia. I'm a specialist in the magazine style of maternity photography. In this channel, I talk about professional editing techniques to help you make more money with your photos. Now, let's get into the video. There are so many videos out there telling you the best way to export your photos to be used on Instagram without losing quality on your photos. What I want to show you in this video is explain a little bit better of the export settings and actually show you what the different export settings will do to your photo and which one I believe it is the best. So the first thing that we need to do is actually see what Instagram is telling us about the photo resolution. Okay, so now we are here on the Instagram website and they're saying that when you share a photo on Instagram, they will make sure to upload the best quality resolution possible. And Instagram will give you different sizes that you can actually post on um, photos on Instagram. So we have landscape, portrait, and the square one. The ones that I use 100% of the time for my business, for example, is the portrait size. So it's the four by five. And the height of it should be 1,350 by 1,080 pixels. So that means that when I am doing the settings of my photo, I already need to have it crop it in this size. Uh, another thing is that Photoshop is saying, if you do a different size that they do not support, they will be cropping the photo for you automatically. Also, if you do a lower resolution, they will make the photo to get to the minimum resolution of 320 pixels. So that means that if you do and upload a lower resolution on Instagram, Instagram will make it bigger and this is gonna not be good for the quality of your photo. Uh, another thing that they will do as well is that if you upload a higher resolution that they do not support, they will make sure to compress that and make in a resolution that they actually um, support. So your photo that has a really good quality, if you don't already upload it in the um, metrics that for Instagram is telling you to do, they will reduce the size of the photo and that's gonna make it lose quality as well. So now let's go back to Lightroom. And let's say that this photo is the photo that I'm gonna upload on Instagram. The first thing that I need to do is to make sure that the size of my photo is correct. So I need to crop this photo because I want the photo to be in a portrait, but even if I want it in the landscape, I need to make sure that I'm following the metrics that Instagram is telling me. So right now I'm gonna go and crop the photo. I'm gonna do the four by five because it is what Instagram support. And right now I have in this landscape um, format here, but I want a portrait. So I'm gonna press X in the keyboard and it will automatically change the view from landscape to portrait. So I'm just gonna just here see where I want my photo. I think this is perfect. So I'm just gonna crop the photo. And now we are going to export the photos and actually see the settings that we need to use to have the best quality for Instagram. I'm gonna go here to File, Export. And what you wanna focus on is in the File Settings, Image Sizing and Output Sharpening. These three settings here are the most important ones that we will have to do with the quality of your photo. So I'm gonna go to file settings and what you wanna do is to keep JPEG as a image format. You want the quality to be 100%. The color space you're gonna leave in sRGB because it is what the, um, the internet supports. So now I'm gonna go to image size and what you wanna do is to go to the long edge. Again, I'm talking about the portrait. I'm gonna go to the long edge and I'm gonna do what Instagram supports. So it's 1,350. If you wanna do the square, for example, you can um, go to the long edge or you can go to the shorter edge. It doesn't matter because it's gonna be a square and you can do 1,080. 
but for me in my case I'm gonna do the portrait so I'm gonna leave as 1350 pixels and then we have the resolution this is something that you might see many videos telling you different things about the resolution so before we actually choose a number for the resolution the resolution will change the quality of the photo but before we actually choose a number for the resolution i want you to understand what resolution actually means now we are in the adobe website and he now we are on the adobe website where they're talking about image size and resolution. Resolution will be measuring how many pixels you have in one inch. So that means as much pixel you have in one inch, you're gonna have a better quality of photo. If you have less pixel in one inch, it means that you have, you're going to have a lower quality of a photo. That means that if you have a lower resolution and you try to make the photo bigger, you're going to see a bunch of pixels. So it's gonna be a little bit blurry. The quality of the photo, the details in your photo, it's going to be missing a little bit. However, depending on what you're doing with your photo, you will wanna change the resolution of your photo. The standard resolution for web images, so if you are posting photos on your social media, on Instagram, the standard is 72 PPI, that means pixel per inch. This is often also called a screen resolution. So let me go back to Lightroom. So the resolution that you want for your photos to be posted on Instagram is 72. Now, if you want to print a photo, in general, the standard resolution is 300. You can always confirm that also with the place that you're printing your photo. But for you to understand better about resolution, just think like this. When you're creating a photo album, printing a photo, or, or creating a wall art, you need the photo to be um, printed in a really big scale. So it's something that's big. So because of that, you will need more pixels in one inch. So you have more details on your photo and it doesn't look blurry or it doesn't look weird. However, on the internet, you don't need that bigger size because when you go to the Instagram, for example, you're seeing on a phone, you're seeing on the laptop, it's not something that you're seeing in a big scale. So that's why the resolution here is not a high number, even though that you will mess with the quality of the photo. So 72 is the resolution that you should have for your photos. Now let's go to the output sharpening. And some people do that, some people don't do that. And I'm gonna save a photo with that option and without that option so we can see if it does make any difference actually in the photo. You can select sharpen four and you can have selected here a screen because it's going to be a photo that you're gonna be posting on Instagram. So it's more for the screen. And another thing is the amount, you can have standard, you can have low, you can have high. I think that standard is a pretty good quality for it. So I'm gonna export the photo with the sharpening and without the sharpening, and we can see the difference. Now I'm gonna go to Photoshop so we can actually see if there is any difference with the sharpening and without the sharpening. I open both photos here and I'm just gonna copy this photo. This one is with the sharpening and I'm gonna pass here. I'm gonna get closer, zoom in, so we can actually see very well what's happening to the photo. So both has the same size, and one has the option of the sharpening output, and the other one doesn't. So this one is with the sharpening option, and this one is just with the size of the photo. So the one that we are seeing right now is with the sharpening, and here's without and here's with. I'm gonna get even closer. Okay, so just adjusting here, getting closer. Here's the before, here's the after, before and after. So there is a difference between selecting the option. The photo is slightly a little bit more crisp, but for you to see that difference, you need to zoom in and get really, really close to something so you can actually see that it's making a difference. However, it does make a difference and I think that it looks better because it's crispier, if I can say like that. And this is an option that I would definitely leave it on if you're trying to export photos to your Instagram. 
Another thing that I've seen many videos do is to export a bigger size of the, the size that Instagram is telling you to do because a lot of people said I didn't notice any difference and Instagram is going to do something with a photo either way. So let me go back to Lightroom. And now what I wanna do is to keep the output sharpening selected and we are gonna change the size of the photo. I'm gonna double the size of the photo, so 2,700. And I'm gonna have everything how it is. And I'm gonna change the number here to 2,700. Put it sharpen. Okay, so I'm gonna export this photo. Now I'm gonna go back to Photoshop. I have my photo here that it's a uh, double size. I am gonna copy this photo I'm gonna go back here to the other photo where we are doing the comparison and I'm gonna paste my photo here. Of course, we have a bigger size. So let me just reduce what Instagram will do to your photo if you have a bigger size like the one that I just did. Instagram will automatically just do this, resize your photo. So I'm resizing the photo and I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna get closer to the eye and see if there is any difference between you saving the photo in a bigger size or not. And I'm gonna get closer and a little bit closer. And here is the bigger size and here's the smaller size. Bigger, smaller. So if you notice, the bigger size actually ends up losing quality than if you already have the photo in the perfect size that Instagram is telling you to have. I don't know if you're being able to see exactly what I'm seeing here on the screen, but if you pay attention here to the white rectangle, you're going to see that when we go to the bigger size that I resized it, it gets a little bit blurry. So here's the bigger size and before. That means that saving the photo in a bigger size and letting Instagram resize the photo will give you a lower quality in your photo. One thing that I want you to pay attention though is that nobody's going to be seeing your photo that close on Instagram. Instagram will not allow anyone to get that close to the eye to actually be able to see that it lost quality or not. So let's see the photo in a smaller size and let's go through all the settings here. Perfect size. Perfect size with sharpening and bigger size with sharpening. There are no visual changes in the size of the photo. So when you're looking on Instagram in your cell phone, you cannot really tell that much difference with the quality of the photo. But let's go back to Lightroom. And what I would recommend for you and the settings that I use when I'm exporting the photos to Instagram is first, make sure that your crop is in the correct size. So go to crop and make sure that you have the right crop selected. If you want the square size, you can choose this one, one by one. I like to use the portrait one because we are showing my portfolio on Instagram. So I would do the four by five. And when you go to the, okay, when you go to file export, what you need to focus on is the file settings. So JPEG, quality 100%, color space, sRGB, image sizing is long edge, 1,350 pixels, resolution 72. And I do suggest you to have the sharpen for screen amount standard because even though it's not very visible, it gives a little bit more sharpening and make your photo to be a little bit more crisp. So this is what I would recommend as setting for you to have the highest quality possible that you can have when you're posting your photo on Instagram. Now you know the best and correct export settings to have a high quality Instagram photo without losing resolution. This is important when you're trying to showcase your work on Instagram. But let me know if this video was helpful for you by clicking the like button or leaving a comment. If you want to know other ways to improve your skills to make more money with photos, check out my latest video here on the screen and also subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every week. But for now, this is everything. I hope this video was really helpful. Until next time.